so this is a, one of the rarer types of questions in that the question is going to ask for algebraic uh, expression for your answers. And uh, you'll get other questions that are like this in a, a future homework set where um, there's no number to plug in. You just uh, need algebraic expression. So, um, so I thought I would do just to go over and make sure that um, that you're okay with this type. So it says so shown below is a double slit located at distance x from a screen with a distance from the center of the screen given by y. Okay, so the question is setting up a kind of a coordinate system with y equals zero here, and it's uh, uh, using, okay, I think that makes sense. Uh, when the distance d between the slits is relatively large compared to the wavelength lambda, numerous bright spots appear called fringes. Yeah, it, it's uh, describing the double slit interference uh, pattern that you have seen in your textbook and elsewhere, just describing it in words without telling you what the shape looks like. So let's look at the question here. It's asking for small angles. Oh, and <laughs> it is actually giving you the small angle approximation. Uh, the other approximation that I think you've seen when we were doing geometric optics was uh, where tangent theta is approximately equal to theta. And one more is where cosine of theta is approximately equal to one minus uh, theta squared over two. Um, here, this is the approximation that we need for where sine theta is approximately theta with, as long as theta is in radians. The distance between fringes is proportional to the distance delta y. Uh, I see. So, hmm. I'm not sure. I think this figure actually gave away the answer. Um, <laughs> let me just to make sure <laughs> that uh, that's what it's talking about. So I think by distance between fringes, it's uh, uh, it's uh, referring to the, the distance between the nearest the fringes. You can count them as uh, either between bright fringes or between dark fringes. So this is what it would be referring to as delta y. Um, and that's what the figure says. Now, um, if you are working this out from scratch, you would uh, work this out um, using the conditions that you know for um, that you know for the constructive and destructive interference. So one thing I can use is I know central maximum is at uh, theta equals zero. So I can uh, use the location of the first order interference maximum to, um, uh, to get the distance between the fringes. So the condition here would be the D, the set slit separation times the sine theta is equal to here M would be one times the wavelength lambda and so here you get that um, sine theta is equal to uh, lambda over D for this first order interference maximum. Now you want to relate this to the position separation on the screen. So you are looking at a, you are looking at a, a right triangle like this with the separation being with the separation being the opposite side, the X is the adjacent side, and this is your angle. So um, based on that, you can say tangent theta is equal to um, delta Y over X. And under the small angle approximation, you can say theta is approximately equal to sine theta and it's also approximately equal to tangent theta. So this left-hand side is equal to this left-hand side. So you can equate this and this to say lambda over D is equal to 
delta y over x. And solving for delta y, you do get x lambda over d. So that's how you do get the answer if it wasn't given in the figure. So <laughs> I'm a little lost why um, this question is asking it. x times lambda over d. You are given all the quantities in um, a different unit. You know, you are given one in nanometers. Um, you are uh, slit separation is given in millimeters and um, and the, the distance is given in meters. Um, what I might suggest for fun is to convert all these to uh, millimeters. So 690 nanometer, as an example, would be, um, it would be 0 0.69 micron. So it'd be 0 0.00069 millimeter. And the distance would be uh, 2700 millimeter. Then once you, work out, once you work out all the numbers, the units will work out to be millimeters. So, um, so I, since it's you know easy question, <laughs> that's what you could do for fun as you are plugging in the numbers, or you can just convert everything to basic SI units and then make sure you convert later to millimeters too. Um, one, one thing I will highlight is skill at use, um, using and converting between non-basic SI units. It's something that becomes more and more useful the further you go into science and engineering because each field has a uh, units that they consider natural and they are very seldom kilogram meter second. So, and, and you will some, see some examples of that even in this class. When we do special relativity, we'll be using natural units or I'll at least talk a little bit about natural units. And when we do quantum mechanics, we are going to be using units of electron volts that are um, natural in the context of quantum mechanics, but it's not a basic SI unit. Okay, it asks, what would be the distance between fringes if the entire apparatus were submerged in water whose index of refraction is 1.33? Hmm. So this is the question of what changes and what remains the same. So we do this reference to index of refraction what you know is that it has a direct impact on the speed of light. So speed of light changes from C to C over N. That's the number one change. And when you relate the light wave properties, um, you have this relationship between wave speed and uh, wave length and frequency. The wave speed is the wavelength times frequency. And uh, this is a kind of common situation that comes up a lot in physics, which is that you have a expression that has a three dynamical quantities. And you have some change to the situation where one of these three dynamical quantities has changed. Now it's your job to figure out which has changed. And because this relationship alone doesn't actually tell you whether it's wavelength or frequency that's changing. This is where you need to bring in some outside information. Here with, um, with wave properties, so something that you just have to know from experience and familiarity with the light is that this frequency tends to be fixed. So when the, some property of medium changes, the changes of velocity, the frequency will still be at the determined at the source and not change. And it will be the wavelength that changes. And so that would have an implication here because the interference conditions are given in terms of wavelengths. So, so yeah, uh, once you kind of figure all that out, then what you should figure out is that uh, lambda is equal to V over F. I am keeping the frequency the same. So V as it changes from, you know, C speed of light in vacuum to the V. Uh, I, so this would be basically C over F times one over N. 
and I recognize this as the wavelength of the light in vacuum or this light wavelength that we are originally given. So this should become the, let me call, let me call this lambda naught, the original wavelength that was given divided by n, index of refraction. So, um, so you use this new wavelength for the remainder of calculation. So the, the, so it looks like the, the wavelength in water is shorter. So the, the separation between the fringes will be narrower. So it should, uh, the, and the formula is relatively simple. X times um, lambda N, which is uh, lambda O divided, original divided by N, and the whole thing divided by D. X and D, the physical sizes there hasn't changed. Um, yeah, I think here the really the hardest part, if you will, is uh, knowing that in th in this expression that it's the wavelength that's changing, not the frequency. And I guess um, when we do special relativity, we'll probably talk about Doppler shift a little bit. Doppler shift is an um, exception where the frequency does change. Most of the times the frequencies remain constant. Um, okay, so part D, using the result of A, find the wavelength of light that produces fringes 12 point, some um, fringes some delta Y apart on a screen um, X from double slit separated by D. Uh, with the setup in air. Uh, that seems rather simple. I can take the result in A, solve it for lambda. It should be uh, D times delta Y divided by X. Um, yeah, watch the units. I would recommend converting everything to, well, here, I guess you can do it um, if you want to make it fun, you can convert everything to nanometers. Some of the numbers will look a little bit um, absurd converted to nanometers. 2.7 meters will be, you know, this will be equal to 2.7 times the 10 to the nine uh, nanometers. But um, yeah, I think it's a relatively simple number plugging in exercise. Um, 